Namaste. From the ancient era, the cosmos has enchanted the human society. This subject of astronomy has had a strong influence on people. By its majestic beauty, the cosmos has mesmerized artists, philosophers, and all sorts of romantics. Since how long Indians had an expertise in astronomy can be verified from the fact that the Sanskrit term used for geography is Bhugol. Bhu meaning earth and gol meaning ground. Sanskrit is the language of the Vedas. So, at least since then, people in India knew that the earth is round. It is said in Indian scriptures that once earth was drowning in water and at that time Vishnu took the shape of a bowl known as Varha Amta and takes the earth out of water. We don't know the truth behind the legend, but if we check the shape of the earth, it is round, meaning that Indians knew more than 10,000 years ago that the earth is round. It's amazing. This Brahmanic interest and proficiency did not also escape the notice of foreign observers and writers. For Megasthenes found the yoga system flourishing in full perfection and Strabo referred to astronomy as a favorite occupation of the Brahmins. Megasthenes, the Greek historian in 300 BC mentions that Brahmins in India during that time knew that the earth was spherical. And Strabo in 64 BC mentions that in India, the concept of spherical earth was quite popular. Elberuni in 1050 AD in his book Kitab al Hind mentions that Hindus know that the earth is spherical. Surprisingly, Europe only accepted when they saw Apollo pictures from the space. Galileo in 16th century mentioned that the earth is sound, which thousands of years before him, Indian scholar Aryabhat had already mentioned in his book Aryabhatiya in the 5th century. We call our god Jagadishwar. Jagat plus Ishwar is Jagdishwar. Jagat means word and Ishwar is God. So Jagdishwar is God of which word? Which word? Means they knew that there are more than one words. Right? I'll come back to it later. But Jagdishwar is the God of which word? He's the God of Jagat. Jagat is which God? Jisme Gati hai. That which moves. So since antiquity, we knew that earth is not stationary. It is moving. Brahmagupta mentioned that the earth rotates on its own axis and revolves around the sun. So much before Nicholas Copernicus came with the heliocentric model of the earth, we knew that very well as the Sanskrit term given to solar system is Surya Mallika. Surya meaning sun and Mallika is Mala, garland around the sun. We knew that sun is in the center and planets are moving around it as garland around the left. Even if you look at Navgraha statues in the temples of ancient India, sun is always kept in the middle, testifying the heliocentric model of the solar system. The very famous Rig Vedic verse, the Gayatri Mantra, in its opening line says, Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha, Bhu meaning earth, Bhuvaha meaning antariksh, the space, and Swaha is the other world, a world beyond this world. It shows that ancient Indians even knew that there were many more galaxies and they have even named them, in which Satyam is the highest one. Nandacharya in Shishadi Vrudh Tantra speaks of seven atmospheric layers as Pravaha, Parivaha, Suvaha, Samvaha, Udvaha, Pravaha and Avaha, which are named by modern scientists as Exosphere, Thermosphere, Ionosphere, Mesosphere, Stratosphere and Troposphere. When we landed on the moon and brought some soil from there, we came to know that the moon that looked so cool, even on a full moon night, looked so white, but its soil is black. But surprisingly, in Atharvet, there is a shlok which clearly mentions Chandan Madhi Krishna, meaning the soil of the moon is black 
and it reflects the light of the sun. Ancient Indians very well knew the difference between the planets and the stars as in the ancient Indian temples, nowhere in Navgrha statue we see any statue of a star. If I ask any one of you who knows a bit of astronomy, which is the closest star? The answer will be Proxima Century. You know what name ancient Indians gave to it? It's Mitra. And Mitra means one who is the closest. And if you think that this is a mere coincidence, let's take another example. Antares is the 15th biggest object in the sky and the name our ancestors have given it is Jeshta, meaning the biggest and they were right. Jeshta means the biggest and they have given this name to a star in the sky which is 15th brightest object and now with the advanced sciences we came to know that they were right in naming it Jeshta as it is proved by the modern scientists that it is very huge and it's at least 12 times bigger than the sun itself. The importance of astronomy in ancient India can be understood from the fact that astronomy or Jyotish is one among the Vedas. The six auxiliary disciplines of Hinduism that developed in ancient times and have been connected with the study of the Vedas. Jyotish or astronomy is called Eye of the Ved Purush which deals with the astronomical and astrological aspects of fixing auspicious date and time to perform various Vedic rites and rituals. There are two versions, the Aj Jyotish and the Yajush Jyotish. One belongs to Rig Veda and the other to Yajur Veda. According to tradition, Sage Prabhu is said to be the first person who perfected the knowledge of Jyotish and built a record of the natal charts of every human being who was to be born on earth. The object of Jyotish Vedang is not to teach astronomy but to convey such knowledge of the heavenly bodies as is necessary for fixing the days and hours of the Vedic sacrifices. It gives some rules for calculating and fixing time for sacrifices. Maharishi Lagarde's Vedam Jyotish is the oldest astronomical work available. Later, we find many Sanskrit treatises on astronomy and mathematical calculations. Bhaskaracharya, Varaha Meher and Aryabhat are known ancient scholars conversant with these scientific subjects. If you want to know more, about ancient sciences, keep watching the videos on history of science in ancient India and do not forget to subscribe the channel. Thank you.